Hello everyone, I recently watched The Legends of Dungeon and here's some hot takes about this anime. The thing is, I'm pretty sure most people who watch this anime or even just heard about it are gonna say that it's really really good. Because of that, we're not gonna talk about why this anime is actually really really good. Instead, we're gonna talk about why I'm pretty sure every single character in the show has something wrong with their head. Roll the intro! This time I'll edge. Alright, in case you're unfamiliar with the premise, the anime is basically an adaptation of that one failed D&D campaign you had with your friends, where one of the friends decided to do random shit for the sake of doing dumb shit because he thought it was so funny. Only in that anime, that one friend is uh, the main character. Because of that, his sister is being eaten by a dragon. Everyone else is teleported out of the dungeon. Two of the friends leave your friend group because goddamn you're annoying. Therefore, the anime leaves us with three main characters, Chilchuk, Lias, and Brasil, who are now have to go back in the dungeon and somehow defeat a dragon and possibly maybe save whatever is left of their friend. And so here's the funniest yet the stupidest thing possible. Right away, the first dialogue those characters have basically goes like, um, so if we save our friend from the dragon who's currently digesting her, can we even resurrect her? And Marcel, who's pretty much the only magician, is like, well, I don't know. Because of the, the characters are literally on the clock, they have to get to the bottom of the dungeon as fast as possible before their friend is completely digested. But the funniest part, when they realize they have no loot, no money, no food, two of their teammates left the group. Therefore, getting to the bottom of the dungeon will be an equivalent of beating Gojo in his prime. And in this situation, their first thought is... Food. <laughs> and I'm not joking, this scene goes right after the dialogue about the dragon eating their friend. Guys, could you be like a little sadder? Maybe more than a little? I remind you that your friend is dying a very painful death right now. Um, they also explain that in this dungeon it is really difficult to die because all souls are bonded to the body because of some curse or blah blah blah, but again, exactly stated, they have no idea if they can bring their friend back or not. So it is really freaking funny when literally, literally every episode until they find Sister of Elias, they spend cooking! <laughs> like, bruh, every episode begins with the same exact scenario. Bro, we have nothing to eat, let's catch some monster and cook it. And they spend the whole time cooking, even though, I repeat, <laughs> guys, you gotta hurry up, your friend is being digested by a dragon. You know, I am legitimately a little concerned because they mentioned this poor girl only like twice in the whole journey. And you know, this was the whole point of the journey in the first place. <laughs> oh yeah, speaking of a low attention span when it comes to saving people, there is even the freaking scene not that long from the beginning of the show when uh, they were fighting Mentecora who has poison or something. And one of the random side characters got poisoned and the characters are literally like, so, uh, yeah, we have this uh, anti-venom thingy, we can save this guy, but instead of just giving it to him, let's put it into food. And they spent like several hours cooking, this guy was struggling over there, dying from poison, and then they're like, so, yeah, here's antidote. Couple of sadistic creeps. The point is they have to cook monsters because they're basically broke as shit and all their stuff is left in the dungeon where the dragon used to be. So now they have to cook monsters in order to at least, like, eat something. Conveniently, they meet Senji, dwarf who used to work in this dungeon for a long time, and because of that, he pretty much knows all the fauna and knows how to cook it. Only <gasps> plot twist! He was saying that he was cooking animals in this dungeon for 10 years, and the dungeon was discovered 6 years ago. <gasps> Tragic backstory? Yes. Long story short, he ate his friends. There are honestly a lot of tragic backstories, honestly, for just the sake of tragic backstories. And I don't mean Sanji's backstory, because his backstory is actually really well inserted into the story. We actually figure out more things we see in anime right now, so, like, it is well done. Elias's backstory, on the other hand, is kind of stupid, because he just says a lot of facts from his life, Pretty randomly, it doesn't affect anything we see on screen at the moment, and like, if he didn't say any of that, nothing would have changed really. Yes, yeah, sometimes these kind of flashbacks extend the world building a little bit, or sometimes they describe a main character, which I guess is important, but sometimes it just happens for the sake of dragging the episode slightly longer, or to describe characters who we see on screen for like 5 minutes, like with these guys. And that only proves my theory that those characters are insane. Imagine how that would look like in real life. Like you're talking to some random guy you just met and he's like all of a sudden, yes, one day I was driving my Lamborghini, fell off, broke all my arms, and now that is why I'm a depressed person. <laughs> like, <laughs> Delicious in Dungeon in general for some reason likes to focus on the characters that are not really relevant to the main storyline. 
For example, this one time we randomly cut to this uh, random group of adventurers who are just doing random stuff basically. We spend a good amount of time with them, we learn about their adventures, and then all of a sudden they find a chest of treasures, which turns out to be like poisonous bugs. They bite them and they all fell unconscious. Conveniently, of course, main crew finds them and eats those bugs, because why not? But afterwards, those adventurers wake up, realize their treasure is missing, and go chase the main characters, thinking they stole it from them. But they just get attacked by fish monsters, again got poisoned, main characters found them for the second time, and for the second time, when those guys wake up, they thought main characters stole stuff from them, and they for the second time went after them. And I thought this interaction, which lasted several episodes, which we got to know these characters for some reason would lead to something. But no! Like, when they met, um, those, like, adventurers just said, Oh well, I guess it's our fault. We probably misunderstood something, never mind. Are you fucking kidding me? No, they- So all this build-up and basically filler episodes led to nothing. That was just a waste of time. Yes, okay, technically, one of those characters is gonna be important later or something. Again, it's not really explained because it's probably gonna happen in Season 2. But why spend time on all of those side characters where none of them are gonna be important? Honestly, though, even that one guy is actually kind of weird upon himself, too. Because when his friends rightfully ask him, so wait, we went to all this dungeon hunt for nothing, he's like, well... Aren't you interested in what this main character is doing, how he reached that far? I am interested. That was a quote, by the way. Like, bro, are you serious? You guys in a dangerous dungeon where you know can die, or even worse, actually, because you cannot exactly die in this dungeon. You'll die, turn into a ghost, and spend eternity losing your mind. But yeah, I guess lies is worth the risk for sure. Speaking more of the schizophrenic thinking, by the way, because one of the weird decisions with the plot, and I don't really know if that should be a positive or a negative thing, all those characters that we see on screen are not really friends, they're co-workers. It, it's literally said several times that the characters don't really know stuff about each other and that they're basically working with each other for money. Even in an episode where they stumble upon a bunch of clones, monsters, who can basically become a copy of yourself, they spend so much time figuring out which one's which because they basically just don't know that much about each other. Like I said, the characters do act friendly, but sometimes they randomly just almost out of nowhere state that, oh yeah, by the way, we're just co-workers, we don't know that much about each other, and after this whole thing is done, we're gonna split up. Like, I don't know, those moments are a little weird, especially when characters constantly risk their life for each other. Like, it is some kind of camaraderie, you can say, but... Uh, I don't know, that was a little weird. I do get it that in the show it is explained that death in the, in the dungeon is practically meaningless, it is really difficult to die, because of that we see several characters who don't even care about ethical consequences in general, who are literally ready to risk anyone's life as soon as they achieve their own meaningless goals. Because like I said, death is not important, well, unless it's uh, somebody important to the plot. Because Eliza's sister does die, in fact, and uh, in a very horrible way, as it looks like. They literally find her bones at some point, and it's Jesus Christ. Like, at some point, anime becomes really freaking gory, actually. Like, none of the characters actually acknowledge that the situation they're in becomes a horror show almost out of nowhere. Like, the story is pretty lighthearted from the beginning, and then, all of a sudden, you have to build your friend's skeleton out of small pieces like it's freaking Lego, and everybody just seems to be okay with it. Like, they're all treating it like it's a normal situation, so are you guys okay? <laughs> then they just do a forbidden ritual that can get them in the jail, and again... Everything is okay now, everything is fine. We got the guy, it's fine. Like, even when the Med Nate shows up, which is creator of the dungeon, and who is apparently the villain of the whole show, and who's mentioned, like, twice, or something like that, and I honestly kind of forgot he exists, but, like, when he starts attacking everyone... Um, Marcel says, oh yeah, brah, I wanted to talk to you for a long time. <laughs> like, bro, this guy is trying to kill you. <laughs> Anyhow, Netflix recently announced the second season, which I for one cannot wait for. So, if you like this video, tell me in the comments, like, subscribe, see ya! <laughs>